Over the weekend, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway handed down its results for 2021. And at the same time, it also provided the investment guru an opportunity to release his annual letter to Berkshire shareholders. Link in the description below for that one. Welcome back to the channel, guys. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at how Berkshire Hathaway performed in 2021 and cover a few of the highlights from the weekend earnings update. If you're new to the channel, we cover all things finance and stock market related. So if that's what you're into, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel with the little button below. Berkshire's update has become a high profile piece within the investment community, and it never disappoints as Buffett covers a range of issues and makes his opinions known. This is the time of the year where you can come to realize that when Buffett speaks, investors listen. This year's update spans a number of key themes, from calling out companies that have deceived investors with adjustments to their earnings, the importance interest rates have on asset valuations, to a glowing endorsement of tech giant Apple and its CEO, Tim Cook. The billionaire investor has also let his guard down to speak to some of the frustrations surrounding a lack of business opportunities. All the while, Buffett purchased a record 27 billion in Berkshire shares during 2021. Now, first things first, Berkshire Hathaway was able to record a bumper year with operating profits surging throughout the final quarter of the year and across the calendar year as well. Having previously been caught up in a slowdown amid the effects of the pandemic, this turnaround continued to gain momentum during 2021 and even prompted Buffett to back that trajectory with the company's funds. In total, operating earnings grew 45% in Q4 to reach $7.3 billion and leapt 25% to $27.5 billion for the full year. Berkshire bought back $6.9 billion of its own shares across the final quarter of the year and a record $27 billion worth of Berkshire shares in 2021. At the heart of the pandemic, when the Berkshire share price slumped sharply, the firm bought back $24 billion of its own shares. Cash continues to accumulate for the conglomerate, and at the end of the year, there was a near record $146 billion of cash on Berkshire's balance sheet. Berkshire typically distances itself from focusing on earnings, which are mostly derived from investment gains across its holdings. But the company saw a 10% improvement here to reach $39.6 billion in Q4 and $89.8 billion for the full year. In terms of earnings from its core business interest in the energy, utility, and railroad sectors, these grew 12.3% to $2.2 billion. Even the insurance business delivered a $372 million windfall after sustaining losses just last year. Buffett wasted no time seeing the praises of Apple and in particular its CEO Tim Cook. Berkshire benefits from nearly $800 million in dividends from Apple per annum and its 5.5% stake in the tech giant has been growing following Apple's share buybacks. This is something Buffett has voiced strong approval of given the earnings upside that doesn't require Berkshire to outlay any cash. With a claim towards a share of as much as $5.6 billion of Apple earnings, Buffett considers Apple to be one of the four giants driving Berkshire's performance. He went on to pay special tribute to the company's leadership. Tim Cook, Apple's brilliant CEO, quite properly regards users of Apple products as his first love, but all of his other constituencies benefit from Tim's managerial touch as well." End quote. Berkshire's stake in Apple, which first began in 2016, is now greater than $160 billion in value. It accounts for approximately 40% of Berkshire's share portfolio. Buffett has even called the iPhone maker the second most important business it holds, second only to its insurance exposure. One of the other areas that is sure to set tongues wagging is Buffett's straight shooting when it comes to earnings. He went on to say, a quote again, deceptive adjustments to earnings to use a polite description have become both more frequent and more fanciful as stocks have risen. Speaking less politely, I would say that the bull markets breed beliviated bulls, end quote. In isolation, the comments might raise eyebrows, but in unison with some of his other comments around the lack of attractive deals across the market, things gel together a little more clearly. The investment genius noted that we find little that excites us. However, the company's near record stockpile of cash in lieu of stakes in new businesses is seen as a temporary affair. Quote, Charlie and I have endured similar cash heavy positions from time to time in the past. These periods are never pleasant. They are also never permanent. End quote. In the meantime, the direction is clear. Share repurchases are going to be a major near term fixture as part of Berkshire's investment strategy and building shareholder wealth. Only when opportunities emerge at an attractive price will the conglomerate take a closer look. And even then, Buffett clarified that both he and Charlie are not stock pickers looking to capitalize on short-term share price movements, but rather business pickers that invest based on long-term performance expectations. 
Insurers remain the biggest giant in the Berkshire arsenal, with their floats swelling from 19 million over 50 years ago to 147 billion today. However, that doesn't mean that other names aren't continually growing in importance. And while Apple might be the name that steals the headlines, Buffett hasn't downplayed the contributions of its industrial businesses. Berkshire holds around $158 billion of domestic infrastructure assets on its books, with railroad business BNSF and utilities operator BHE both seeing record earnings of $6 billion and $4 billion respectively in 2021. They make the cut as two of Berkshire's other giants. Buffett also sees tailwinds to come from the US government's $1 trillion spending package, upgrading roads, bridges, and other infrastructure around the country. Buffett describes BNSF as the number one artery of American commerce, an indispensable asset for America. Meanwhile, BHE is viewed as a utility powerhouse and a leading force in wind, solar, and transmission throughout much of the United States. These statements make it clear that the Oracle of Omaha has a resolute conviction surrounding the importance of high quality, industry leading infrastructure. Berkshire's investment magnate also touched on another issue, the company's role as a good corporate citizen, including its environmental record. Not only one of America's most successful businesses of all time, the company shares strong ties with the underlying performance of the economy. As the US economy has rebounded strongly, so too has Berkshire, but this is thanks to its core portfolio of bellwether stocks that drive the economy. More directly, Berkshire paid $3.3 billion in federal taxes during 2021, as well as significant sums of state and foreign taxes. In effect, Berkshire is a major player when it comes to giving back to the country. Buffett sees this as a relevant facet in an age where large cap companies are now being scrutinized with greater attention given the rise of ESG investing. At the same time, Buffett continues to pay homage to the greatness of the US, arguing absent our American home, however, Berkshire would never have come close to becoming what it is today. Berkshire's prosperity has been fostered mightily because the company has operated in America. At face value, these words may seem like lip service, but this is a mantra that has governed Buffett's investment philosophy for a long time. It is clear Berkshire's team retains a clear bias favoring homegrown investments on the back of the strength of the US economy. It also tells us Buffett has faith in the resilience of the economy as interest rates rise, something he sees as just one factor behind valuations. So there you have it and thanks for watching. I hope you found this information insightful. And as a matter of disclosure, we currently own myself and clients own Berkshire Hathaway shares. So we'll see you in the next video and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.